with, with all the, the ups and downs you've had over the last couple of decades, what's what's currently motivating you in your stand-up? Um, that I'm the greatest in the world and that people still need me. So you're to be the undisputed heavyweight comedy king of the universe is a big deal thing, so, you know, my back hurts once in a while. I still get through it. <laughs> how, how much of it is proving it to to the public and how much of it is proving it to yourself? You know what? I'd say it's equal. You know, I'm that type of performer. I always like proving myself to myself. I always like accomplishing, even though I've done, I mean, I've had an incredibly... Uh, unbelievable roller coaster ride in show business it's not been like just go up and stay there it's up down up down so it's been exciting on top of everything else now are, are you gonna have a chance to uh, interact with any other comics here at the festival uh i see the carrot top keeps texting me but i haven't seen him yet you know we're good friends he'll probably show up at the Jim lounge Norton, you know right, you did uh, with him the other night we were yeah we did the down, down and dirty, dirty together but, you know, Jim and me are friends for a long time. He was an opener for me before he became a headliner himself. So, uh, yeah, it's good to see so, some of the guys. I haven't seen too many yet. But, you know, I know everybody. Do you get a cut of uh, Jimmy Norton's checks? Uh, since, think, since you help bring him up? No, no, no. <laughs> I don't look at it like that. You know what? You know, when, when I work with a guy, when I find a guy that I think is funny and he starts to get to where he's been wanting to get to. I'm, I'm a stepping stone for that, so that's a great thing. Do you do you also like impart lessons to the young comics based on your experiences? Well, you know, to my you know, I do talk to a lot of comics and, and I'm inspirational to them in a way that, you know, like I said, it's been a rocky road for me. So I'm always the type that even when I'm down I get up and I reinvent myself and I find something else I want to do. I mean even this this comedy album I just did, which is called Filthy Animal, it's the most innovative stand-up album ever, hands down, and the most exciting one ever. Really? Because, you know, because you've been trying I, to just... I don't just do a set and just slap it on a CD and put it out. I work with it and I create something for the fans that they have to keep going back to tracks and going, what, what was that I just heard? Play that thing again that, that was just on there. I always put things, you know, I look to make it different. That's why albums like The Day to Laugh That Died was, was just, I mean, that went gold in a week. Well, I was just going to say, that's, that's, that's something that a lot of comedians cite is very innovative and kind of yeah, that teaches was, comics something way, about the business. That's one way of going about it, you know, because I was doing only arenas back then, and I wanted to do the ultimate late night set, you know. Um, you know, then there was The Garden, you know, which is The Garden, which is 18,000 people going nuts. This album... You know, this is years later. I wanted to really give them. I, I pride myself on being the rock and roll stand-up comic. You know, so I should give them that kind of album, and I do. And uh, you know, my kids who have a band called Valley Rocks, they debut on it because they bring me up, and, and their hit single plays on it called Rotten Claw. So it's you know, there's bonus tracks. There's, you know, I got some ideas actually from when Eminem would put out his album and his albums and put different tracks in between. And right. So we all learn from each other as performers. Nice. Thanks. Thanks.